this is Dr. Bev Knox and you are listening to my psychology tutorials learn psychology while you sleep drug use is an issue that affects individuals families communities and all levels of government not just here in the United States but around the world the users of every type of drug include some who have tried it but won't use it again, some who use it frequently and infrequently, some who use it more often but in small amounts, and some who use it frequently and in greater amounts. This is as true for users of heroin and crack cocaine as it is for users of alcohol. People may use illicit or dangerous drugs for a variety of reasons. They may be in part of a deviant subculture. They may be signaling their rebellion. They may find the effects of drugs to be reinforcing or they may be seeking an altered state of consciousness. The specific types of drugs and the ways they are used will be influenced by the user's social and physical environment. Some terms that are commonly used in discussing drugs and drug use are difficult to define because they are used so widely for many different purposes. The word drug will be defined here as any substance, natural or artificial, other than food, that by its chemical nature alters structure or function. Illicit drug is a term used to refer to a drug that is unlawful to possess or use. Drug misuse generally refers to the use of prescribed drugs in greater amounts than or for purposes other than those prescribed by a physician or dentist. Abuse consists of the use of a substance in a manner, amounts, or situations such that the drug use causes problems or greatly increases the chances of problems occurring. Addiction is the controversial and complex term that has different meanings for different people. Some people want to reserve the term only for those whose lives have been completely taken over by substance use. No drug is entirely good or bad, and every drug has multiple effects. The size and type of effect depends on the dose of the drug and the user's history and expectations. Deviant drug use includes those forms of drug use not considered either normal or acceptable by the society at large. Drug dependence involves using the substance more often or in greater amounts than the user intended. Among American college students, almost 65% can be considered current users of alcohol, less than 20% current smokers of tobacco cigarettes or pot, and less than 2% current users of cocaine. Both alcohol and illicit drug use reached an apparent peak around 1980, then decreased in the early 1990s with a slower increase after that. Current rates of use are lower than at the peak. Adolescents who use illicit drugs, mostly pot, are more likely to know adults who use drugs also, but are less likely to believe that their parents would object to their drug use. They are less likely to see their parents as a source of social support and more likely to have friends who use drugs. These same adolescents are less likely to be religious and more likely to have academic problems. 
a typical progression of drug use starts with cigarettes and alcohol, then pot, then other drugs such as amphetamines, cocaine, or heroin. However, there is no evidence that using one of the gateway substances causes one to escalate to more deviant forms of drug use. Drug dependence refers to a state in which the individual uses the drug so frequently and consistently that it appears that it would be difficult for the person to get along without using the drug. War on drugs is not an official term, but rather a shorthand way to refer to the efforts by the United States and other governments to reduce or eliminate certain kinds of drug use. The relationships between substance use and various indicators of individual differences in personality have been studied extensively over the years. In general, large-scale survey studies of substance use in the general population have yielded weak or inconsistent correlations with most traditional personality traits. So, instead of looking at any level of substance use within the general population, we can look for personality differences between those who are dependent on substances and the quote-unquote normal group of people. When we do that, we find many personality differences associated with being more heavily involved in substance abuse or dependence. The association with impulsivity, for example, is much stronger in this type of study. Likewise, if we look at groups of people who are diagnosed with personality disorders, such as conduct disorder or antisocial personality disorder, we find high rates of substance use in these groups. Overall, it seems that personality factors may play a small role in whether someone decides to try alcohol or pot, but a larger role in whether that use develops into serious problems. Although societal, community, and family factors play an important role in determining whether an individual will first try a drug, with increasing use, the individual's own experiences with the drug become increasingly important. For those who become seriously dependent, the drug and its actions on that individual become central, and social influences, availability, cost, and penalties play a less important role in the continuation of drug use.